Kobe's game. So like one that's really good for me right now is I have this Giannis build, which is like really blowing up my channel right Just awful news this morning as we learned that one of the real bright spots of this NBA season, and of course we're talking about Zion Williamson, will be sidelined for the foreseeable future with his injury. Oh no, Hank. Yeah, yeah, you echo the sentiments of just about every basketball fan everywhere, Hornet. This is a guy unlike anything we've seen before in the association, and it would be a disaster if he didn't come back 100% from this. Yes, sir. things are going out east in the early season taking a look at boston they reside in the seventh slot right now in the early part of the season and of course the knicks I so, and Brent, did you take a while to get back in the swing of things or were you ready to go out of the gates in order to stay in the NBA, Kevin, no, you, I could not do that. Right, yeah. I could not do that. <laughs> you played 14 I, I know. years. I love coming into training camp, being in tip-top shape. It, it really was something I took a lot of pride in. Is that I wanted to be going so that our practices for our coaching staff was something we could we could get through. Now I understood the role other guys on the team where it might take a little while for them to get going but for my mindset and my confidence in the year I wanted to make sure that the offseason and the work that I was putting in because that's where players improve the most I was going to come into camp ready to go Jay inside and that one good hard work inside on the basket Jay silencing some of the doubters out there in terms of his effort to the paint, there's Portis. Shea with the block. Green deciding where to go with it. And there's the pass to Williams. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. And now it's a three-point Celtic lead. Yeah, three consecutive field goals have come right at the rim. The D had better start Buckley now. Jacks up a three. Hudson can't hit. And so Green will bring it up for Boston. This game coming after a loss against the Bucks. Yeah, you, you could see they were pressing in that one, and the shooting percentages dipped because of it. Yeah, I'll say anytime you're having trouble getting over that 40% field goal mark, it's probably not going to be your night. Knicks trail by five. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Here's Nilakina, guarded by Smart. Che with the block. Crazy to think scouts were saying that Che didn't play with enough heart. That block showing you that he wants it. Green the pass to Che. Low block shot on the way. And there are the Celtics with another best. Not hard to see why. They are giving up points on this run. Just too many good looks from in close. Here's Nilakina, guarded by Smart. Trier passes to Gibson over Williams, and he gets it to go from the high post. Good decision making by Taj Gibson. Knows he has the green light to shoot that quick jumper. Smart kicks to Che. Smart passes to Williams. Back to Smart. Fires the three. Knocks down the three ball. Smart's got seven points. Not the biggest fan of that shot, but he had the space to get it off. So, so why not? Dotson the pass to Trier. 
at the Dotson. Outside Portis. And he lays it straight in. A huge hole in the defense that possession. He didn't waste any time cutting through it. Celtics leading by six. Outside Tatum to the inside. Shea's shot is off. New York's gone one of three from beyond the arc so far in the game. Trier passes to Gibson. One sixteen left here in the opening quarter. Lock at six. Here's Trier, and again it's New York. Well, that screen wasn't quite as effective as it could be. However, they find a way to get it done. Credit the shooter for overcoming that aggressive defense. Smart dishes to Che. Green bounce pass. Che inside. Tatum passes to Che. It's not going to fall. He's taken four shots and made two. Here's Dotson. Guarded by Tatum. Passes it to Gibson. With the fadeaway. Misses off the right iron. Well, with his touch from mid-range, Kevin, that's almost always good. That won't shake his confidence. And Jay gets it to go on the assist by Green. And that's now six points for Jay. Neely Kina looking it over to the left side wing. Portis kicks to Neely Kina. Over Smart. Incredible defender. Smart can provide help as well as stick you one on one. And so the first quarter is in the books. Boston on top. They lead by six. And back in a moment as we'll get underway with quarter number two. Bobby Portis, who's known for his work ethic, said he learned a lot from his mother. She gets up at 3, 4 in the morning and gets off at 1, 2 in the evening. You know, she works hard. And she was a basketball player in her own right, Greg, a scholarship at Jackson State University. Yeah, and gave up basketball when she had Bobby, but she encouraged him to pursue his dream, and she said now she's living her dream through him. And for those of you just tuning in, the second quarter of action is where we're at right now. What do you guys think about the Celtics here in this one? Well, credit their anticipation skills on the defensive end. They forced a number of turnovers. Just playing some real gritty defense right now, just getting up in bodies and forcing a lot of turnovers. Williams is out there with Jay. Then there's Smart. Then there's Murray. And it's Green in at the two. That's who's in the game for the Celtics. For a guy who's still working on his range, love to see Smart attacking on the interior. Pass to Dotson. Outside Gibson. And he banks in the layup. Gibson's got his second bucket of the night. Here's Smart. He's coming off a 19-point game against Milwaukee. Tons and tons of playing time to be had in New York for Coach Fisdale. Second round players, second chance players. A lot of these guys are going to get their shot. Of course, R.J. Good on the way up. Smart's got four points in the quarter. And last season, Brent, guys like Robinson, Dodson, and Moutier, they all got to see the four for the Knicks. Yeah, those moments helped, although all of those guys are not back with the Knicks this coming season. But that younger talent getting out on the NBA floor for actual NBA minutes could help them to play a pivotal role moving forward for those players. Shea passes to Brock. Portis against Smart. And there's the whistle. Three-second violation. Here's a look at what's coming up for New York. On Sunday, they'll tip off a homestand starting with the Sacramento Kings. And then on Wednesday, they'll be playing against Blake Griffin and the Detroit Pistons. 
they've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Pass to Trier. They could use a bucket. It's hauled in by Brown. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. Tatum wide open. He fires one. It's good. Great play by Williams to set it up. Uh, assists like that have typified their effort today. Terrific ball movement. Here's Trier. He's covered by Brown. Here's Trier. Williams with the block. The, the amazing thing about Williams, yeah, he, he can block shots inside, but he can also block shots out on the perimeter. His ability to play in space means he's more than just a rim protector. Doesn't care where you're shooting from. Jay kicks to Brown. Shot clock at six. Back to Jay. Looks good, is good. Bucket number four from the field. He's taken only six shots. Fantastic ball movement. They're picking them apart with their pass. New York calls timeout. And the movement to bring the NBA back to Seattle, the Pacific Northwest. Brent, you played there half a decade. I know you've got fond memories. How much does that city love the NBA? Uh, the Seattle fans are incredible. And, 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 now, how and much, knowledgeable. How, yes, and how much longer do we have to keep talking about how we want a team in Seattle? One of the it's great cities in this country. A fantastic uh, place to, to, to play, to live, and uh, the city is starved to get the Sonics back up there in the green. And, and they'll support them. Oh, there's no question about it. So the time is ticking, and everybody's excited about the opportunity in the near future for the team to return. And there's the foul. It'll go on Frank Nilekina. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus. And we'll go to the line to shoot two. The Celtics have gone 9 of 10 from the line, so making the most of their chances. And when you look at their numbers from a season ago, 80% as a unit, that's something you'll be happy with. Yeah, a nice job of drawing the contact and creating opportunities at the line. 106 left in the first half of the game to end the run and off target that time from Trier. No doubt the quarter just not going his way. Still scoreless. Shea's shot is off. And he thought he had a clear path to the hoop, but the defense didn't give up on that play and cut him off. New York, no good that time either. All the energy is on the other side right now, and every miss just makes it worse. Well, the other team is scorching hot, and they come down on this end and can't find a way to get the embers going. As tough as they get, Smart, a bulldog out there, does a good job of drawing contact, oftentimes by initiating it. And so, Smart nails both of them. 36 seconds left in the first half of basketball. Here's Trier. He's covered by Brown. Outside Portis. The pass to Nilekina. From deep three-point range, rebound Boston. They can look forward to the Cavaliers after this game in a matchup against Cleveland. That one will start off a three-game road trip for the team. Shot left block, and Che with the nice bucket inside. Che's got four this quarter. The scouts question his desire in college as to how hard he played. Che showing that he's got the fire here in this one. And so it's Boston, having no problems at all. Up 29 points heading into the next quarter. They have made it very tough to get a shot off against him. Their defense has been stifling. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Coach, you're in a good position here at the break. What do you tell your team to make sure they don't let up? Well, I don't think it's about letting up or playing better. It's just playing the right way. We just have to play good basketball. And we talked about it before the game. That's our goal going into the game. That doesn't change no matter what the score is. So that'll be the discussion at halftime. Thanks very much, Coach. Back to you. A 
Okay, David, much appreciated. And now time for halftime. So we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. too much drama in the first half but maybe things will tighten up here in the second and you know Marcus Smart has been really making it happen something has kicked him into gear tonight as he has done work Our... <laughs> to start the third and New York looking at who <laughs> they've got it's Randall and Robinson at the four and the five Alfred Payton is out there with Barrett. And it's Harkless in at the three, the small forward. Outside Williams. To the middle. And Che with the basket on the assist by Williams. 12 points for Che. You know, I think Williams has a, a terrific future. A, a charismatic, likable kid who can be unselfish to a fault. Some nice passing by New York here. Left side, Gibson. He dishes it to Barrett. Puts it up from 15. That one's not going to go. And it's Boston the other way. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, last season we thought the Knicks' cornerstone player was Chris Stapp's Porzingis. But the player and the team fell out of love with each other, and the Knicks traded him to Dallas. The draft picks and cap space freed them up for a wild summer, led by the drafting of rookie R.J. Barrett in the draft. Now New York has one of the more drastically revamped rosters in the league. Kevin, there's a lot to be excited about going forward in the Big Apple. Big moves indeed, David. Thank you. And for a lot of these kids, Greg, it's interesting how quickly teams expect them to get up to speed. Case in point, R.J. Barrett. Yeah, I mean, he had only the one year of college already being asked to produce. Fortunately, he's very mature for his age and generally plays up to the level of competition. Faster pace now, Brent, in the NBA. This has become an endurance sport, and well-conditioned athletes are a must. Obviously, Kevin, over the past couple seasons, the, the pace has picked back up. It's very reminiscent of the early 80s when you had the Lakers running, the Denver Nuggets Denver, running. Yes. You, have, you have these teams that are just flying up and down the floor. So as a fan, I think it's a wonderful opportunity, especially the closer you can sit, to watch a Russell Westbrook, to watch a Paul George, to see a Giannis uh, get up and down the floor with such fluidity and grace and skill set. So... The game opening up has also opened the eyes to the fans about just how great the athleticism of NBA players is. At the line, the At the line, the one throw no good for Che. Well, the great thing about the NBA is that you can prove yourself on a nightly basis. Che's stock fell staying four years in college. A lot of analytics guys don't like the fact that as you get older uh, you maybe don't have the chance to reach a higher ceiling but he's performed since he's entered the league. And Greg talking to scouts about R.J. Barrett they love the athleticism but what makes him especially good is the work ethic and the confidence. Yes, yeah, some elite prospects will, will take plays off. This guy never does. He's not one that sits around and reads his press clippings. He's a warrior, a leader, and, and he's proven to be a winner. Moves on moves. <laughs> That's Jason Tatum. I mean, this guy's a natural isolation scorer. Jab steps, crossovers, turnarounds, fadeaways. He's got an awful lot in his bag. Here's Dotson. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Passes it to Trier. Pass to Barrett. 
over Edwards. Barrett, no good. Austin's of six three-pointers to drop since coming out of the locker room at halftime. And stolen by Portis. Here's Dotson. Williams with the block. And it's out of bounds. They say it was last touched by Williams. One thirty-two left to play in the third. Pass to Dotson. Here's Trier. Here's Barrett. Maybe a time to rest him right now. Just give him a bit of a breather. Try to help him get back on track. Tatum passes to Williams. On the wing, Green. Shea with it. Working on Portis. Oh, and he plucks it off the glass. Wow. And the pass to Dotson. The 19-footer is on the money. Dotson's got his first bucket in this one. That's nice vision there. You see that pass. You make the feed before the defense has a chance to react, and that opens up a, a much better opportunity to score. Williams kicks to Tatum. And he gets the friendly spin, and that one drops. Tatum's got eight here in the quarter. Oh, man, this would be a different ball game if they didn't have this type of scoring to rely on. Here's Trier. Edwards defending. Trier passes to Gibson. Five to shoot. Teardrop shot. Rebound by Williams. Williams has got his fourth rebound in this one. Tatum passes to Williams. Eyes again, and that's two points on the layup. 16 points for Che. A lot of questions about Che and his effort in college. If he continues to do things like that, that'll go away. It's Portis high post. What a play! He simply drains it in at the resourceful move there, ending the period on a high note. Great way to end the quarter there. Team is pumped up. And so it's. And meanwhile, Coach Brad Stevens talking to his team. We're playing play to play. Okay. Great job scoring, coming down, directing the ball, being up to touch, making everything difficult, rebounding every time. Every time, every time the right way. Be us, no shortcuts. Oh, got to respect what he just said during that break, encouraging his guys to rebound and defend. And Kevin highlighting how important fundamental basketball is. Solid defense and aggressive rebounding gets you wins in this league. And as we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same from the first three quarters. They've got Edwards, Murray out there with Williams, and it's Green, and it's Che in at the pivot, manning the middle. That's the Boston Five. Murray dishes to Che. Basket is good. He'll get a chance for one more at the line. Really wild to think that there were doubts on Che's commitment to the game. He's proving himself and proving that he can hoop. At the line, he's something. Che. At the line, one shot. throw no good for Che. But when it comes to choosing Brent, the MVP, the coach of the year, the rookie of the year, all these different great awards, do you like the current voting structure uh, for these big awards right now? I, I don't mind the current voting structure. I don't know how you get away from what it is that, in terms of handing people ballots to, to figure out who it is that they think have earned those awards throughout the year, Kevin. What I don't like about the structure is that you have media members who are voting on things that have huge financial ramifications for organizations. And when that stuff happens with a player who's going to earn a super max contract because he made an all NBA team, what you're going to start doing is restricting smaller market teams from being able to afford the ability to keep their star player mm -hmm. with the team. And so that that needs to be fixed and fixed immediately. I do not like the media. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. That's we, I am the you media. You are the media, Kevin. Strike that. Let's re rewind. Can we delete that? 
Well, few players in the NBA are as scary as Dennis Smith Jr. when he has speed towards the rim. Smith just attacks with a ferociousness when he puts the ball on the floor. It can leap out of the building and, and strong enough to dunk over and through just about any player. Still developing the rest of his game, but you like his aggression when going to the hoop. Free throw drop for Smith. You know, Kevin, can Dennis Smith Jr. not rely on just trying to... Peyton looking around. And so it's Boston easily grabbing this one. It was a tale of two teams tonight. One that was in total control, operating flawlessly, and the other just searching for answers that they could never find. I mean, the energy here is just so tremendous. Fans involved from the get-go, and once they started to really pour it on, it was fun to see that rhythm and flow from their perspective. For Brett Berry, Greg Anthony, and this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. See you later. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. And we welcome you back. I'm Ernie Johnson. We got Shaq here. We got Kenny here. With this one in the books, we've got a special post game guest joining us. Hey, Shaq, you guys stomped that team. And I mean, literally. It wasn't even close. When did you realize this game was yours to lose? Hey, man, I think the key for us was to never get comfortable having a lead. Treat the game as it was dead heat all four quarters, you know what I'm saying? Because as soon as we left that gas pedal against a team like that, boom, your advantage is gone. So we didn't feel like we had the game until it was obvious, too late, you know what I'm saying, for them to come back. Man, wow. And thanks for joining us this evening, folks. We've reached the end of our broadcast, sadly. For Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith, this is Ernie Johnson. Farewell and good night.